Continental Championships offer bragging rights across the zone. And we're here in Nabil on Tunisia's Mediterranean coast. Welcome to the 2023 African Championships. And in this session, we have no less than eight gold medal matches. Well, the conditions are pretty good here. Uh, warm and cloudy is the prospect for today. And it looks like a fairly steady breeze here as well. I'm Karen Bashir and joining me and the spectators here on the Mediterranean coast is Brazilian Olympic archer Bernardo Oliveira. Bernardo, first off, how are you? Hello, Karen. Hello, everybody joining us for today's broadcast. We're going to have some very exciting archery. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to some very exciting gold medal matches, as you said, plus some Olympic quotas today. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, that's coming up a little bit later on. And in fact, uh, we'll have a, an interesting uh, a new thing for us, uh, Bernardo. They're going to change this 50 meter field to a 70 meter field uh, midway through this session uh, as we look forward to those Olympic quota spots being contested. But as you can see, uh, the archers for the first match waiting in the wings. We're going to start with uh, some team matches in the compound archery. First up, it's the compound men's team gold medal matches. And it uh, looks like there's a fairly lively crowd here. Bernardo, what, what's the difference uh, for you when you go to an international competition and when you go to your zonal championships? The, the zonal com uh, championships, the, the continental championships are more like a, a, more a scenario you know better. It's like uh, archers that you meet more often. It feels a little bit more, um, it, just really the environment that you know better, people you've competed against so many times. So yeah, it, it can really feel just, just more comfortable, something you just know better. I, I, I quite like, in my case, the, the Pan American Championships, and uh, I'm sure that uh, for, for the African Championships, it's also a reunion of, of old friends, you know? Yeah, and we're going through a, a period in the calendar for all sports where there are these uh, continental championships and what Pan American Games were just uh, held recently in uh, Santiago, Chile. Yes, so I just I love the 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 continental ones because um, I think when we go to the world competitions, you see so many unknown faces. You know, there there is something a bit uh, just daunting about the, the environment. But uh, here in Abo, uh, I think not not only we've got the, this beautiful setting, but it's also beautiful weather. This this is the weather I think is just perfect for archery. You know. Uh, good temperature, light. I think it's not going to be changing, which is uh, which plays a factor, especially in the compound. So uh, I think it's just going to be perfect today. Yeah, and that breeze. Uh, we can see the flags in the, in the background there. This is actually a, a rugby field normally, but uh, you can see in the background the flags are fluttering. It looks fairly steady. The wind, doesn't it? Yes, yes. I think conditions are just perfect today. Well, I, I'm expecting some very high quality shooting, and we're about to get started for the first one. And here they come indeed. It's time for the compound men's team gold medal match. Playing on the gold medal between Mauritius and Zimbabwe. So let's welcome the archeries. Target one, Mauritius team, Charo Andrian, Hawking Hurry, Kumio Dominic, on the target two, Zimbabwe team, Blanchard Hurry, Lonsberg David, and Steve Jess, on the line, judges. Favorite city from Tunisia.
So Mauritius will be shooting first. They line up with Adrian Sharo, Henry Hao Kem Fat, and Dominic Kumo Singh. Zimbabwe with Barry Blanchard, David Landsberg, and Jesse Steele. So archers that we don't often see on the international circuit getting their moment in the limelight. Just three teams in the competition. Zimbabwe came through Nigeria in the semi-finals. It was a buy for Mauritius as they got the uh, highest score in the ranking round of 1995. So time to get this gold medal match underway. Dominic Ku with one World, Cup, World Cup cap, the 41 year old, to get the match started. No. Henry Howe going second, 46 year old, world number 174. No. And completing the trio, it's Adrian Sharo. So the teams will go through two rotations. Mauritius shooting their first three arrows, one per archer. Now we switch over to Zimbabwe. Barry Blanchard. 38 year old to start things off for them. Eight. Next up, Jesse Steele, the youngest member of the team at 30 years old. Their third archer is the world number 204, David Landsberg. Ten. So 26 plays 28. Bernardo, anything you're seeing early doors? I think the wind is uh, a bigger factor than we initially expected. Uh, we could see the uh, we can see Ku's shirt uh, shirt moving um, with the wind blowing a little bit. And um, it, but the, the funny thing is that we see them uh, mista uh, making mistakes uh, to the opposite direction of the wind. I wonder if they are overcompensating a little bit. Both teams, you know, usually this first oh. end, the first set is. Um, what we take to just familiarize with the venue because these archers they were practicing at a practice field right before additions they can change a little bit in the time you know in between practice and then when you first start the match so the first arrows they are crucial for just you know just finding where you stand and where you should aim and um mauritius giving zimbabwe a little bit of an opportunity uh, in their closing arrows let's see whether zimbabwe can capitalize Nine. So a 10 required from David Landsberg to keep things all level. Compound scoring, of course, accumulative. Eight. 
So an early lead for Mauritius after the first end. 54 plays 52. And I think you're right, Bernardo. That that wind, uh, perhaps, uh, like you say, offering a little bit more than it first looks like. And it's quite an open field, isn't it? Yes, yes. And um, as the day is starting, this this can uh, play another factor, you know, as, as the sun rises and temperatures rise, uh, we might have uh, just stronger winds blowing and maybe even changing directions. So conditions can, can be changing quite fairly quickly. And honestly, I think the wind played a, a big factor all throughout this week in the earlier stages of this competition. Um, so everything is yet to, to play for here. Uh, I think everything is, is wide open for both of these teams to, to achieve the gold medal here. And uh, it's been a while since, well, certainly since you and I last uh, called a match. Uh, remind everyone how this compound team scoring works. As you alluded to earlier, it's a uh, cumulative scoring. So um, unlike what we have in recurve, with, which is the, the set system. So basically until the end of the match, uh, we'll just uh, sum up all the arrows and uh, whoever has the highest score at the end wins. Um, in case we have a tie, we'll go to a shoot off in, in which each team, uh, each archer of each team will shoot only one arrow. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're going to have four ends um, first, uh, of cumulative scoring. Each Boris archer of each team is going to shoot 15, two arrows, so each team has six arrows per end. Zimbabwe, and in the end, 52. we have a maximum of 240 points, and this is how we go in compound. Well, scores confirmed, and thank you for that uh, quick run through of how the scoring works. It is uh, Mauritius leading by two points after N number one of four. Start of end number two here in the compound men's team a gold medal match. Zimbabwe trailing Mauritius by two. We'll shoot first and up first. It's Barry Blanchard. Eight. Important for Zimbabwe that they managed to correct in that last arrow. Uh, we first did, uh, we saw the first two ones drifting high, um, and as a team, uh, you want to be communicating with your teammates all the time to be giving them feedback, uh, because you should use your your teammates' arrows uh, as the guide for the arrow you're going to shoot. But nonetheless, uh, Zimbabwe gives uh, another opportunity to widen the gap. No. Bit of pressure on Zimbabwe now, provisionally trailing by five points. Eight. Ten. 
just what the Zimbabweans wanted there. Landsberg has been the highest scorer so far for them. Has that drifted out into the seven? They're not sure in venue. So we'll wait for that one. It's uh, been provisionally marked as a seven, which would still give them that uh, two-point lead they came into the end with. Uh, a little bit all over the shop. And Bernardo, you, you talked about um, that communication between the team. It seems to be incredibly important right now. It is, it is. And uh, Mauritius had the perfect opportunity to open up, uh, to widen their lead and really cement it. But uh, we saw a very tense moment in that last arrow, something that uh, is more prone to happen with compound archery, which is when you just draw the bow, because the movement can be quite uh, quite strong because of the bow let off. We saw the arrow falling off the arrow rest and then the archer having to, you know, adjust that and put the arrow back while anchored. This is definitely something you don't want to be doing at a final for a gold medal. And because we have the time constraint, like you don't have a lot of time for just letting down and preparing the shot again. So that was definitely a quite tense moment. Uh, I don't see any teams getting too comfortable here. And uh, yeah, the, that communication is just one of the tools you have in your in your belt, you know, to do whatever you can to have an edge over the other team here. We saw, as you said, the uh, arrow having to be replaced onto the rest whilst at full draw, whilst the anchor. Uh, I mean, explain to everyone just how difficult that is. Yeah, um, the, the the delicate thing, like the 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 detail here, is because in, in compound archery, because of the cams, like those kind of wheels that you have at the extremity of the bow, uh, we have something that is the let off. So uh, at the beginning of the draw, the bow is like super hard and it's very hard to pull. But then in the middle of it, it gets really so much easier because the cams they absorb the tension, and then this decrease in tension can just make the movement you know not be so smooth and then you can have this you know tweak in the bow and sometimes the arrow can can fall off the rest and um you definitely don't want to be doing any unnecessary movement Under while anchored hands. while Revision aiming and this is what the archer had to do and uh, yeah i think it wasn't too bad that still landed on the red yeah well uh, mauritius uh, got the uh Two arrows that went for a measure, both marked up. So they have indeed extended their lead by a single point. But there was an opportunity there for them to go five clear. Now just three clear. And Zimbabwe will shoot first in the third. Blanchard then for Zimbabwe, shooting first. We're halfway through the match, Zimbabwe trailing by three. And that is a low seven. Blanchard has been making um, something that I, I really don't like. It's, it's quite a common mistake, especially when you are nervous at a match like this. I think he's leaving the shooting line way too fast. He's not really finishing his shot. and. Uh, you know, just giving that extra little bit of time just to make sure that you finish the shot well. He's rushing off the line, and I think this is really impacting how he's finishing his shot, and he's been quite inconsistent. Nine. Nice. 
So another opportunity here for Mauritius to extend their lead. And something that caught my attention here, um, as we're going to see Zimbabwe shooting next, we can compare with the Mauritius team. Um, Mauritius, they have longer bows, which are bows that are more suited for um, a target setup, which is the kind of competition we're having here. While Zimbabwe, uh, especially their first two archers and, and Blanchard on, on the screen, uh, they have more compact, shorter bows that are more suitable for field archery, for example. Um, because it's a, it's a kind of competition where you have to be walking around with your bow and something Seven. more compact is more um, just better to handle. But in a target competition, these shorter bows, they can be a little bit more unstable and harder to handle, especially for precision, uh, which is what we have here. So um, I, I think this, this can be uh, a little disadvantage they have. Nine. Nine. So provisional 154, 56 I should say, and uh, Bernardo I have to congratulate you, you waited two ends before you started to bring in the geek factor and uh, all the technical level of uh, but it's a, that's a really interesting point and in all seriousness that's an, an interesting point because i think it's very clear for everyone to see the difference in the size of the bows between the two teams yes well uh, in the beginning i had uh, that you know number salad that was explained with uh, how many arrows each team shoots and and all it might have been an overload so i had to wait until i talked to something more geeky uh, <laughs> but yeah uh, I, th I think this, uh, this plays a factor because uh, the longer the bow, the more stable it is. And uh, in a target competition, you, you, you just want to have uh, whatever you can to, to maximize the uh, precision and in your potential. Eight. I think it's clear for all to see that uh, Mauritius have capitalized is there any particular reason why uh, the Zimbabwe team would use this type of bow? Is it because they they more regularly compete in the field? I'd say so, yeah. Um, because like uh, these bows, especially compound bows, they, they can be quite pricey and um, not everybody can afford to have, let's say, two, three bows for each kind of competition you're going to do or each kind of archery you want to do. So you just try to buy one that fits all. Uh, but I, I'm not saying that you can't shoot scores with, uh, with shorter bows. The Spelt Cup final that, that we commentated together not, not long ago, um, we did see some archers, especially in the women's side, that they had shorter bows. And uh, yeah, they, they were just shooting great scores with it. But um, I think that here it's, it's playing a factor. I just, I just see the Zimbabwe team, you know, a little bit with the bows moving a bit too much. And I think the nerves also play a factor. Like well, what I said, uh, I think especially Blanchard, their first archer, he's rushing off the line. And, uh, you know, you're not going to gain a significant amount of time by just rushing off the line, really. Y you can take your time to finish the shot. And uh, I think, unfortunately, he's paying the price for that. And in terms of the match, we've got we've got one more end to go. There's a, a six point difference, which uh, now has been confirmed. One sixty two for Mauritius, one hundred fifty six for Zimbabwe. A six point difference. That is a big mountain to climb over six arrows. Yeah, as in compound archery, it is indeed. Uh, it's cumulative scoring, not uh, not like recurve, where in each set, uh, you know, everybody's starting from zero. But uh, as we saw, uh, Mauritius is struggling with that arrow falling off the arrow rest. You know, anything can happen. Um, so you got to keep the pressure up because you never know when when the next team might make a, a big mistake. So it's all to play to play for here.
start of the fourth and potentially final end of the compound men's team gold medal match here at the African Championships of 2023. Zimbabwe shooting first, trail by six, and they need to put down some big arrows here to put some kind of pressure on Mauritius. Well, if anything, Mauritius will see this as a big opportunity. But as Bernardo said, they mustn't let their guard down here. They must stay focused. Well, that's certainly taken some pressure off their final three arrows for Mauritius. All Zimbabwe can do now is put down their biggest scores possible. So a 2.05 set for Mauritius. And they have the potential to do this with one arrow to spare now. Well, Henry Howe see them over the line. Looks like he has. Adrian Shari getting the support from his teammates and the spectators supporting Mauritius in the crowd. Seven, Drifted off into the seven, but it matters not. That is a convincing win for Mauritius. Yes, one arrow uh, will probably go for a measure, but it will be the difference between either a 10 point or a nine point so win and mauritius subject to confirmation from the target judge are the compound men's team gold medalists here at the 2023 african championships pretty dominant performance there bernardo Indeed. Uh, you mentioned that uh, they should just stay focused, not think too much about the result in the last stand, and that's exactly what they did. Super solid shooting by Team Mauritius. Uh, I think they, they were never really threatened by Zimbabwe, except in the, in the beginning. They just had a couple of arrows off here and there. That's care of the arrow falling off the arrow rest. But, uh, you know, other than that, they were super solid. And 
just we're on it all the time uh, Zimbabwe for sure it's it's never good when when you lose the final match everybody came here today expecting to go home with the gold but um, yeah uh, I think Tim Mauritius really deserved this gold medal and they are the African champions so confirmation there of a dominant victory from Mauritius. A 215-205 win in the compound men's team African Championship final. For Mauritius team. And 205 for Zimbabwe team. So silver for Blanchard, Landsberg and Steele from Zimbabwe. But the new African champions, Adrian Sharu, Henry Howe and Dominic Ku claiming gold for Mauritius. Well, first of the gold medal matches in this session complete. Mauritius taking the compound men's team gold here at the African Championships. Coming up very shortly, we'll turn our attention to the compound mixed team gold medal match where Zimbabwe will feature again as they take on Nigeria. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the coaches and the judge for the second match. Coming out now, the coaches and the judges for the second of our gold medal matches here at the African Championships. It's time for the compound mixed team gold medal match. 
So please welcome the ushers. And the compound mix team. Between the Zimbabwe and Nigeria. On the first target, Zimbabwe, Bertrosa Iona, and Steely Chess. On the target two, Nigeria, Inyemi Lare, and Oyoki Saint Emmanuel. On the wine judges, Hussein Abdel Fateh. From Algeria. So Zimbabwe take on Nigeria for the compound mixed team gold medal here at the 2023 African Championships. It will be Zimbabwe to shoot first. Iona Bartosz and Jesse still lining up for them. Uh, for Nigeria, it's uh, Larry Ayani and Emmanuel Oyelakeli. So 50-year-old Iona Bartosz getting things underway. Oh, has that clipped the line? Both those first two shots from Zimbabwe ate into their time quite a bit. They almost looked like they weren't quite ready. Emmanuel Oleke. Shoot the first arrow. For Nigeria. And that's drifted out to the left. Twenty twenty two African Championships Team Silver for Larry Yaney. And she's missed up. Could see her losing some tension right there in the end. See if Ayani. Well, an issue that, with the timing? I think it must be an issue with the timing because it certainly felt like they had plenty of time. Oh. Everybody looking perplexed, looking at the DOS, wondering what's going on. DOS, for those that don't know, director of shooting, the person in charge of the. Uh, officials at uh, an archery competition well they're gonna have to 
reset the clocks in some way, shape or form. But funnily enough, Bernardo, that was going to be the thing that I was going to talk about in between the sets. Uh, it just looked to me, it felt to me like um, Bartosz and Steele for Zimbabwe ate a lot into their time. And it meant that they were getting, once they'd gone, started their process of drawing, they were getting through that very, very quickly. Um, yes, a miss from Nigeria, but my, my fear looking forwards is that if Zimbabwe continue at this pace, they may well run out of time for their final arrow in one of these ends. Uh, yeah, but um, it's funny, uh, Joanna, uh, she, uh, as, as you pointed out, she, she had like a very fast first shot and we were wondering whether it was just the nerves or something, but the, her second shot was just like that. So maybe it's the way she shoots. Uh, I don't know. It's quite unlikely uh, to see this in compound because as I was mentioning in the, the previous match about the let off, um, like it's quite light when you are in anchor position and it gives you a, a very comfortable uh, situation to be aiming and really take your time to finish the shot and um, uh, but I'm still curious about what's going to happen here did, did they run out of time or no it was a problem with the timing system uh, I'm, I'm a bit confused here about it's, what's going on it, it certainly looks like it's been measured as a miss uh, for the final shot so uh, it does indeed look like uh, it was the Nigerians who ran out of time and have only shot two arrows in the first end uh, that uh, gives uh, Zimbabwe one heck of a lead here. 33 playing 17. Well, that uh, has been confirmed. 33 plays 17. Nigeria uh, with two arrows not registering. One of natural miss and one on time. So... Emmanuel Oleki gets uh, things moving pretty quickly at the start of the second end. And now we can even hear the wind. It's being a, uh, it's playing a bigger factor than we thought in the beginning. And we can even see how the arrows land on the target, like with um, the veins and the knock more to the side. And the wind clearly drifting the air quite a lot here. Well, we've got a provisional 69 on the board for Zimbabwe, uh, 44 for uh, Nigeria. That 44 could get pushed up to a 45 because the last arrow was marked as a five for a measure for Nigeria. Uh, but this is some difference. And, and Bernardo, uh, when you look at the ranking round, Zimbabwe shot one 
265, a 1265 to Nigeria's 1018. Is is that really a measure of the difference between the teams? It certainly looks that way. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, um, the the biggest difference was uh, A. Anihi's score. Um, and she she struggled much more in the qualification round and uh, we're seeing her struggling uh, here as well um i think i don't see anybody quite comfortable in this match uh, we see archers everybody walking off the line with like you know just a, a, a tense faces or just looking down i think nobody is really feeling comfortable but um you know we just see nigeria struggling more um Oyoliki, uh the the nigeria uh, man, he, I see a lot of head movement uh, while at anchor. It's definitely not something you want to be doing uh, while performing your shot. I, I just, I just see some some technical aspects that that they show that they they're struggling a bit more than than Team Zimbabwe, and and we saw this difference in in the qualification score. Yeah, and just to add to the pressure, you you touched on it. The wind has definitely picked up here, hasn't it? I mean, you can see. Uh, Yaleki's uh, flag on his quiver is blowing around all over the place. Yeah, definitely a factor here. And if you are already struggling with some technical aspect in your shot, the, the wind just makes it uh, so much harder. And, and the pressure of being in the venue with the, the spectators and, and the cameras and everything. And uh, it's something they have to zone out. Start of the third then. And that wind clearly playing its part here might have just cut the line for the seven there for for your lecky seventeen points from a possible fifty for a Yaney, two misses in the first, denting her stats. The interesting thing we we can see here another another detail um, is that in compound mix team um, we have two targets for each team and uh, we see team Nigeria opting for each archer having their own target if we can put it that way uh, but the teams are free to do whatever they want they can shoot uh, uh, one arrow uh, archer on one target and then in the next sequence one arrow each on the other one but team Nigeria opting for um, each archer kind of owning their own target, but uh, it's really your choice. You just do whatever you, you feel more comfortable. Well, just to uh, add to the drama, Bernardo, on the official scoreboard, there's currently a miss down for Zimbabwe's last arrow. And it's been corrected just now. I, I think they, they're <laughs> listening to, to us. <laughs> <laughs> so we are waiting uh, for the official screening after the third end of this match. Well, provisionally, it's 105 for Zimbabwe, 71 for Nigeria with just uh, one end to go. Um, this is a, a looking particularly tricky now for Nigeria. Um, and it's all down to that very 
first end, isn't it? Two misses from uh, Narai Ayani. Yeah, that that was the, the the big dent in their performance. Um, I think they're not quite matching Zimbabwe all throughout, but you know, to start like that, um, you just make your opponent so much more comfortable. Uh, everybody's coming with lots of nerves into a gold medal match in a venue like this. But then uh, when you start with uh, such a performance, you just make your opponent so much more comfortable. And uh, just uh, and then from then on, Team Zimbabwe just had to focus on their own thing. Um, but uh, yeah, the Team Nigeria, I think they, they should just focus on their own arrows, just try to finish strong, just to walk away uh, feeling a little bit more comfortable about the upcoming competitions and, and to go back home and, and work hard because um, they, they're already doing a great job to be here fighting for a gold medal. It's, it's no, no small feat. And uh, yeah, they should definitely just draw from, from this to keep going stronger in the future. For Zimbabwe, 105. For Nigeria, 71. Trailing by 34 points, Nigeria come into this final end. And as uh, Bernardo Oliveira, our expert analyst, suggests, they just need to focus on finishing strongly and walking away with some pride here. Emmanuel, or Yaliki, will shoot first in his pairing with Larai. Irene, and that's drifted off way Vincent. to the left. And another bow geek uh, observation is the sight by Joanna. Um, her sight is, is quite unusual with the rail in which you move the sight up and down being rather close to the bow than on the extremity as we see in all the other bows in this matches. So, for example, in Jesse Steele's bow, we can see the rail more outward, uh, far away oh. from, from the bow. While Joanna's is, is closer to, to her bow, it's, it's uh, an unusual setup, but it works just the same. That will give him some comfort. Oh, she has to put the arrow back in the quiver. She's getting yellow cards. You're not allowed to get into the shooting line with your arrow out of the quiver. Come on. Let's finish this off with an arrow. It was a really quick shot. She knew time was out, and uh, it's been marked as a miss. We didn't get to see the target, but uh, that was so fast due to that uh, technical infringement. Uh, they can finish with some comfort here. Jesse Steele to finish off this gold medal winning performance for the African title. Eight. And that will do it. A 137 to 94 victory for Zimbabwe. They will, of course, go and check the targets, but uh, a dominant performance. Um, Nigeria's uh, attempt at trying to uh, get this gold medal dented very, very early on, and they just could not recover. Zimbabwe, the better team in the compound mixed team competition, and they are the African champions of 2023.
And before they walk away, I guess we, we have to mention Emmanuel Oyeleke's hairstyle. Right, Karim? I think that's really <laughs> stylish. I really like that. <laughs> He certainly brought something to the party with that hairdo. Of course, they will get the silver medal. Nigeria. So congratulations to the Zimbabwe team for the gold medal with 137 points. And congratulations to Nigeria for the silver team with 94 a confirmation there that Diana Bartosz and Jesse Steele of Zimbabwe are the compound mixed team African champions of 2023. Silver going to Nigeria's Larai Ayani and Emmanuel Oleke. Uh, one sided affair for the mixed team competition in the final with Zimbabwe taking gold. As they clear the field, we prepare for the next match coming up very shortly. The Compound Men's Open Gold Medal Match.
So for the, for the third uh, match, please welcome the coaches and the judge. Coming up now, the Compound Men's Open Gold Medal Match. We will see Senegal taking on Algeria. So please welcome the archers from Senegal and Algeria. So up now, it's the Compound Men's Open gold medal match. Got some para archery at this competition, which is great to see. So, on the third march, from Senegal, Trump Ayou, and Algeria. Petros Abdelrahman and the line judge Jeremy Wu. So our lineup is uh, Abdelrahman Belkus from Algeria has uh, won para archery championships uh, cap, world championship cap. 59 year old is the world number 127 taking on Senegal's Aliou Drame, 43 years old, world number 109, and it will be Drame of Senegal to get the match underway. So both archers seated for this. Um, Bernardo, wh what difference does that make? Because uh, other than other than the fact they're shooting at the same targets, everything else is pretty similar. But what difference does it make in terms of their stability? It makes a huge difference, honestly. Um, uh, myself, I've, I've had in, in some drills uh, in, in my own practice, uh, sometimes we've had the exercise of, of shooting uh, sitting and uh doing so we we put ourselves in in the shoes of a para archer like oh. the ones we're seeing now and it makes a ton of difference in terms of stability uh, i think uh, a lot of times we we underrate how much our legs and and the core they play a huge factor in stabilizing the upper body which is exactly what we what we want for archery because the bow is not going to be still unless your body and your upper body is still and for that you need the, the oh. core and the legs and everything and this plays a huge factor in para archery So two routes to uh, a potential tied score of 24 points. We do have uh, an arrow for a measure from Belkus, the uh, Algerian closest to us. First arrow marked as a six with an asterisk, which means it uh, potentially could get marked up to a seven. Sounds like a first arrow from uh, Belkus has been marked up to that seven. So what we hear from the target judges that uh, Belkus has 
been marked up for a 25 plays 24, but not a huge amount in this. Archers will shoot at three arrows over five ends in the individual competition. So confirmation of those scores. Belkus leading by a single point. So Ali Drame will shoot first in the second end here. Drum is started a little bit low, and we saw him adjusting his sight and bought on his adjustment. There it is on the X ring. Belkus has to reply, has to answer that. But he's been pretty solid. I'm, I'm impressed with Belkus, especially with, with all that mouth and head movement he has in the anchor, which uh, it's similar to what we saw in the previous match. It's it's you would advise your archer to do, but uh, it's been working for him in this match so far. Nine. Bit of pressure on this one for Belkus, and you'll see what Bernardo was talking about. called a seven in venue that would uh, produce a 48 uh, but it looks like uh, this one may have switched around whether it's by a, a point or two we don't know just yet but Bernardo you talked about it um, that movement from Belkis it seems to be part of his process that just before he releases the arrow there is that last little movement of the chin off the string and then back onto it indeed indeed and, and it goes to show that um it, it, there is no right or wrong in archery as long as you do the same thing every time so um if you if you just avoid unnecessary movements uh, all it does is just increase the odds um in which you're going to be repeating the same movement time and time again but uh, it, it doesn't prevent you from doing whatever you want to do just as long as you do it exactly the same every time and uh, belkus even though um he lost some of the lead uh, or let's say the, the one point lead he had in the, after the first end, he is pretty solid. He's grouping. So um, maybe drifting a little bit with the wind, but uh, he's got a very nice group, a little bit high to the left. And it can be just a matter of him adjusting his sight, and then he's going to be back in the middle. Um, I got to say, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised with Belkus being so close to, to Drame because their, their gap in the qualification round was significant. But, uh, you know, in, in a match, it's a few arrows. It's kind of a, a short sprint. So everything can happen, and, and it's, really cool to see, it's really cool to see Belkus so close to Drame and putting the pressure. Um, nobody's too comfortable here. Yeah, 50-50, and, and just to, to add uh, some stats to what uh, Bernardo is talking about, in the ranking round, Drame shot a 6.44 to Belkus's 4.63, and I wonder if that's as much to do with uh, the endurance of shooting from that seated position and the difference in match play. 
works in the advantage of the Algerian. 50 apiece as we go into the third end. That one was a bit too quick. The the timing, uh, I think, Belkus didn't quite take his time to shoot that arrow, and now that leaves Drummy in a much more comfortable position. Yeah. Uh, even more so now. Drama has certainly broken away here. Another quick arrow, just clipping the target there. A very tricky end for Abdurrahmane Belkus. It just looked like he didn't recover from that first arrow, Bernardo. Yes, it can be really hard to forget a mistake like that, um, you know. In, in such a match, you, you, you come into it knowing that every single arrow matters and it's like laser focus in each one of them. And then when you, when you have a blip like that, like a big mistake like that, it can really just shake the focus mentally. That, that you've been in but I, I think it, it just shows that um, we can see that uh, Drame he has a very solid technique uh, we can see him like with very little movement just just very solid overall and um, I think now we, we are just seeing the, the technical difference just just show in terms of the results um, uh, Belkus he, he did great to stay really close to Drame uh, you know, after two ends, but I think now the the differences just just had to to show somehow. Um, uh, another thing is uh, uh, Belkus, the the chair he's sitting on. You can see that it's it's a, a fairly simple chair in para archery, um, just like you have the bow uh, adapted to you, like uh, something very customized. Uh, also, the chair is a very important part of the equipment and to be customized and to give you more performance. And um, Belkus, he he's doing great and a great job um, with a, a very simple chair and I'm sure he can draw a lot of perform performance whenever he can get a, a more suitable chair to, to his body, to his stance and, and everything. So 61 for Balkus trailing by 18 points he'll shoot first in the fourth and now he's not only looking for good arrows he's looking for mistakes from his opponent
Well, big spread of arrows there, but uh, all in the target this time. That uh, lead grows further, 104 to 82. But what's good here, Bernardo, is uh, that the, it's a professional job from Aliu Drame here. He was making little adjustments all the way through, a couple of changes to the site. He's still focusing on himself rather than the lead that he's got. Yes, that's abs absolutely the headspace you want to be in, you know, in, into a match because, like, especially in compound archery with cumulative scoring, uh, if you just make a big mistake, it, it can be the end for you, you know. Um, so if if Drame just focuses on anything else other than his shot, he might end up making a, a big mistake and giving Belkus an opportunity that we know he's capable of seizing. Um, and I just wondered whether he overcorrected his height a little bit because he was like high left and then ended up to the right. Um, but yeah, just uh, great stuff all throughout. Very focused from from Drame from from Senegal. After the four and of this match. The score, 104 for Senegal, 82 for Algeria. So very difficult for Belkus here as we go into the fifth and final end, trailing by 22 points. He's also, unlike Drame, just got to focus on his own shooting. And what will be, will be. High miss there this time. I wonder how much of that miss that we've just seen from Belkus was the wind. Uh, Drame also drifting quite a lot. But I wonder, Karen, if it's also the endurance that you mentioned earlier. I think that was a very interesting point. And maybe the endurance is playing a part here for the Algerian. Drame staying relaxed, even though he had to just do a reset on the draw. In para archery, the, they have a little bit more time compared to, to just uh, the, the standing archers, and uh, that gave uh, Drame a little bit more comfort just to yeah. wait maybe a little bit for the wind or just set up better in these windy and tricky conditions. So the gold secured already for Aliu Drame from Senegal. Oh, it tries to correct the two left arrows. Just goes a little bit further. Still making changes to his sight, but uh, no need now. Uh, that is the conclusion of this gold medal match. And the African champion in the compound men's open is Aliu Drame from Senegal. So ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting for the final results. So congratulations to the Senegal Grand Value for the gold medal and this compound men open and to
So the Compound Men's Open African Champion of 2023 is Senegal's Aliou Drame. The silver medal going to Abda Rahmani Belkus from Algeria. Fabulous performance from Drame winning the gold medal match. 127 to 98 points. Thank you very much. Well, as the athletes clear the shooting line, we prepare for the next gold medal match, another individual match, as we look forward to the compound women's gold medal match when Namibia take on Zimbabwe. Welcome to the third match. The coaches and judge. So on its way out, it's the compound women's gold medal match here at the 2023 African Championships. So this is the gold winner for the compound women between Namibia and Zimbabwe. So please welcome the archers. So the target one from Namibia, Kozi Jacqueline. And uh, the target two from Zimbabwe, Bartos Iona. And the judges line, Jose Abdelfadeh from Algeria. The compound women's gold medal match here at the African Championships will be contested by Iona Bartos from Zimbabwe on target number two up against Jackie Kurtze from Namibia on target number one.
Coates, uh, 41 years old, world number 134. We'll get this match underway. Nine. Seven. Great recovery for Kutze, finishing strong the first end, putting more pressure on Joanna Bartosz. Well, spot on there, Bernardo. So we've seen uh, Iona Bartosz uh, out already with uh, taking the gold medal with Jesse Steele in the compound mixed team competition. Uh, and is it me or uh, am I wrong in thinking that uh, that should give her some kind of advantage? She's got used to the, the field of play. Exactly what I was going to say. Like, that's, a, that's a great point, Karen. Uh, I would think too that that she she's a little bit more familiar with the venue. She she's been here. She's a familiar face uh, in today's competition. But um, it just uh, Jacqueline Coetze just just coming very strong despite that the arrow a little bit low. Both archers um, missing a little bit the gold a little bit low. But um, I thought they would be a little bit closer to be honest because. Uh, uh, they were really close in the ranking round, not not many points separating both archers. Uh, if anything, I, I thought the, the archer from Zimbabwe would have a little edge, but still a lot of arrows to be shot in this match, still 12 arrows to go in a uh, regulation match if we don't have a shoot-off. So it's all to play here for. So 26 plays 21 in favor of the Namibian archer. Oh, interesting point is that... Uh, Bartos, who's going to shoot first in this second end, just using the uh, rim of a hat as a shade protector. Whereas Kurtze, with sunglasses, as the sun has started to come up a little bit higher oh. above the horizon. It's really interesting what you pointed out about the sun, Karen, because um, we see um, ja uh, Joanna Bartosz from Zimbabwe. She's um, a right-hander, and Jacqueline Kwetze from Namibia. She's a left-hander, and she's facing her face is, is facing more the sun, and then that can be a little bit uncomfortable. Oh. We even see her her bow shade oscillating on her face. And this can be quite uncomfortable as an archer because it just changes how you're you're looking at the sight and aiming. It can be really tricky. No. Well, five point lead potentially remains, uh, but Kurtze is going to have that final arrow marked as an eight measured, so she may well have extended the lead there. So these little details that you're picking up there, Bernardo, the, 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 just talk, just to explain a little bit more about what we need to look for with Kurtze and this, uh, the, the shadow coming off the bowstring. Um, it's coming off the, the whole bow, actually. Uh, usually, if you look at her face, especially on, on her sunglasses, you can see the shade of, of the bow on her face. And we can even, it, it, it's good to, for us to spot even more uh, clearly 
um, some uh, we can see on the screen right now some little movements she has on on her arm and hand maybe due to the wind could be but uh, uh, like just that little oscillation on your eyes as you're aiming it can be quite uncomfortable but um, there isn't much you can do in this scenario you just got to be prepared for for everything when shooting for a gold medal and uh, I think she's doing just that she's not really focusing too much on these these things that can make you a little bit uncomfortable she seems to be dialed in and just shooting strong well, the measure went in uh, Kutz's favor as well. 53 plays 47. And the professional guide from Zimbabwe, also World Archery Exec Board member, Lona Bartosz, will shoot first in the third end. Ten. And that is a big swing around in just one arrow. Has certainly given her a good opportunity here. Oh, and she's found the and middle she of the target. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gave us a clue as to why she was not happy with that one. Seven. This is some turnaround here. Provisionally scores all level, and that's changed dramatically in uh, Bartosz's favor. Yes, the scores are level as we wait for confirmation. It didn't look like there was anything uh, there needing a measure, Bernardo. Uh, yeah, I think I think everything is pretty clear. But uh, what a swing. Like uh, things change so quickly as it can happen in, in archery in general. And that's why we love this sport. Uh, it can be so unpredictable. And uh, you see now sometimes it takes only two or three good arrows and you're back at it. Uh, and uh, I can't help but think that, uh, also that Bartosz, she, she did put some pressure on Koetze and, uh, and she felt it. So um, she should just definitely just forget those, those three arrows, perhaps just adjust her sight a little bit uh, and come back strong into the, the fourth end. Um, it seems that they're yeah, we have a confirmation. They're, they're tied for score. Uh, only six arrows to determine who walks away with gold. We have the tied score, 75 for each archer. Well, the first two arrows of end number three are anything to go by. Bartosz dialed into the center. In fact, the, the expression on her face as she shot her third arrow uh, suggests that that third arrow was a a delivery error rather than anything to do with the wind. Can Bartosz continue this change of momentum? First up though, it's Kutset from Namibia. Just what she needed. Now the pressure has just gone up a tiny bit. Nine. Eight. Eight. Drifted out to the left. But I don't tell me if I'm wrong here. But it looked like Iono Bartosz had a, a couple of 
she was thinking about releasing that arrow twice before she actually did. It certainly looked like that in terms of her, her hand. Yeah, I think I think that's spot on. Uh, she she's struggling with timing as well. Um, just not quite so comfortable with her shot process. We already saw that in in her last and, and third arrow in the previous end, uh, where it was just a bit too quick, and she walked away uh, from the shooting line. Just you know, just not happy with her shot. We could see it in in her expression, and um, yeah, in in such a tight match, there like there is very little separating these two great archers. Uh, you, you just gotta take every little opportunity you have. Uh, we see that uh, Jacqueline Quetze she's not just you know uh, jumping ahead and opening a huge gap she is giving joanna bartos some opportunities and it's up to bartos to just capitalize and take those opportunities With two points in this, Arno Bartosz from Zimbabwe will shoot first, trailing by the two points. But this one is far from over. Time for the final end of the Compound Women's Gold Medal match at the African Championships. And it's swung around already. Oh, who can stay the course here? That looks like it's on the line. And the narrowest of leads now for Kurtzer. One arrow to go. A nine leaves the door oh. open. An eight for a tie and a shoot off. Any more, and it's gold for Kurtzer. It's gone into the eight for a 127 apiece. My goodness me, we knew this one was going to be tight. I'm not sure we expected a shoot off. Of course, we have to wait for confirmation from the target judge. But boy, oh boy, what a tight match this has been. Yeah, so many turnarounds. It, it's been crazy. Like, uh, <laughs> wow, this is really exciting. And we might have a shoot off. Let's just wait for a confirmation. But it's been amazing. Well, there's a hint there that it is confirmed as 127, 127. The final result of this match. We have that score, 127 for each. And we go to shut up. There we go, confirmation then, 127 apiece after the five regulation ends, and we go to a one arrow shoot off. Jacqueline Kurtz of Namibia on target number one, closest to us, Ayana Bartos from Zimbabwe. One arrow to decide the African title, and it's Kurtz to shoot first. A decent 10, but there is room there. And that's drifted off into the eight. And after a tremendous match here in Tunisia, Jacqueline Kurtzer of Namibia is the compound women's African champion of 2023. So we are waiting for the official... Uh... 
on the judge signal who is the winner of this match compound woman and congratulations so confirmation then that Jacqueline Kurtzer from Namibia has taken the African title here in Tunisia in the compound women's gold medal match. A shoot off required to separate the two athletes. But Kurtzer of Namibia won the shoot off 10-8 over Iona Bartosz of Zimbabwe. Well, a hugely entertaining contest in the compound women's gold medal match here at the African Championships of 2023. The men have a lot to live up to, and they're up next. the coaches and the judges of the compound men. Now the gold medal match coming up next, the compound men's individual so gold welcome, medal. The archer. So two Mauritians contesting the compound men's individual African title here. Dominic Ku with the blue hat is on target number one and Henry Howe, the white hat on target number two. Both have had experience of this finals range already today. And whilst there is a bit of camaraderie between the two, this is for the African championship title. Dominic coup to shoot first.
Well, blink and you'll miss it. After those two first tens from uh, Dominic Ku there, drifting over to the six, is that any kind of suggestion of uh, the wind or uh, a lapse in concentration? Oh, could be both. Uh, I really didn't see didn't see that one coming, but uh, th there is something I, I wanted to to have said in the previous match already, um, which is in compound archery, uh, you're allowed to have some magnification into your sighting scope. And um, of course, this is good and this can give you some more precision, but in windy conditions, it can be really tricky because you just see the sight pin move way more and this can be really uncomfortable. So um, some archers, they have um, uh, the limit of the, the magnification that is allowed and you just see nothing more than just the yellow or perhaps even the 10. So when your bow arm is moving too much because of the wind, it can be really uncomfortable because you're kind of just, you see your sight just moving all over the place. And um, maybe this is what's affecting these archers here. Very tricky conditions as the day goes on and the sun goes up and we can see the wind blowing pretty strong. Look at the flags on uh, on the left there and the, even the wind sock downrange also moving a lot. It's really tricky. Just a single point in it then. Henry Howe leading Dominic Ku 27-26. in a row suggest perhaps the wind did play its part there second third arrow six from Koo well interesting second then there uh, we can hear the wind blowing against the microphones out there on the range. Do, do you think that was wind affected arrows number two from Howe and three from uh, Ku? I guess so, especially for Ku because he is a left hander. So uh, we can see the, the wind blowing to the left when, when we're looking down range. And for a left hander archer, it means that the wind is hitting your back. And so it kind of makes your arms close. It, it, it just it can help you collapse a little bit more, which is exactly what we shot, in, what we saw in his last shot. So it ended up going a little bit high to the left because he just collapsed. He, he let the bow kind of close him a little bit. And, uh, but it, it's just funny that the two big mistakes he made were coincidentally in his third arrow of each end. So perhaps Ku just, just needs to keep his focus a little bit longer, just, just needs to, to know that he, he can't quite, you know, just let down and relax at the end, you know, he just got to keep the edge until the very end of, of each end, uh, pardon for, for repeating myself here. <laughs> So start of the third here. Confirmation of a four-point lead now for Henry Howe. Dominic Coot has to start closing this up right now. Come on. 
Well, provisionally one point clawed back there by Ku. And uh, he'll need a little bit more over the next two ends if that is the case. Uh, but it, there's a lack of consistency now. The groupings aren't aren't quite as uh, as good as we we saw right at the beginning of the match. Yeah, definitely. At least uh, both of them can can be happy that they, they remain to stay in the gold. These are very tricky conditions uh, once again. Um, what's uh, catching my attention here is this is going really fast. Like both of them are shooting very fast arrows, not taking too long to, to aim and, and think too much. And I think this is actually very good. I think it's a, a good strategy adopted by both archers because when it's windy, uh, you're never going to find the, the perfect spot to aim at to something that you feel 100% comfortable. You, you just got to be, it's confidence above all else. So you just pick a spot and, and shoot confidently at it. And uh, I, I think it's a good strategy adopted by both of them. And um, you know, we can definitely see huge swings. Nobody's too comfortable here at the beginning of end number four. Well, it's turned into a beautiful day here on Tunisia's Mediterranean coast. If you're not shooting arrows, <laughs> the conditions are blustery and archers don't like that at all. A four point lead then for Henry Howe. And that is what Dominic Koo wants. He needs to put down the tens to put some pressure on his opponent and his compatriot, of course, both from Mauritius. Great stuff. First perfect. It's another point grabbed back from Dominic Koo. Now the difference, just three points. Again, we do have to wait for confirmation. I've got three tens down for Dominic Koo. The official scoreboard says uh, two tens and a measured nine. So it could be a four point difference. It was marked up to a 10, so it is 109 playing 112 with Henry Howe leading. Breaking away in the second end to lead by four, leads by three going in to the final end. I'm not sure this is done just yet, but uh, Bernardo, you'd be happier being in Henry Howe's shoes, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, uh, all he's got to do is just focus on his arrows. Under normal circumstances, this would be like a very, very comfortable lead, but uh, not here in a bowl uh, with his wind. But uh, Henry Howe just got to focus on his arrows. He doesn't have to do much to get the gold medal. And uh, Henry Koo, uh, Dominic Koo, he needs to, to repeat this superb performance with three tens and also uh, hope for Henry Howe's opening a little bit and give him a chance. Mauritius versus Mauritius for the compound men's African title. Dominic Coote trailing by three. That is not going to help his cause at all. Yeah, 
A look says it all. Well, it looks to be a relatively comfortable victory. 9-9-8. He just handled the conditions in the end. Henry How Kemfat, giving him his full name, the Mauritian, uh, well, the two Mauritians uh, talking in the middle of the uh, shooting end of the range. It was a tricky final end from Dominic Koo. Provisionally 138 for Howe, 132 for Koo. I think if there is any measure, it's not going to make a difference to the outcome of the compound men's individual African gold medal match here. So confirmation then that uh, Henry Howe Kemfat from Mauritius has taken the compound men's individual African title here in 2023, beating his teammate 138 to 133. Silver then for Dominic Ku Moy Singh Mauritius. Gold and silver here at the African Championships. Another fascinating contest to come next up on the lineup here in this session. We have a new discipline, a gold medal match coming up in the men's barebow competition. So please welcome the coaches and the judge for the Verbo Men match. Another gold medal coming your way. It's the men's Berbo final here at the 2023 please African Championships. The archer from Namibia and Sudan. Of the third one, 
was Louise from Namibia of the target two. Then I had Adin Ahmed from Sudan. The chances line, turn one, who? Contesting the Bebo men's gold medal match at the African Championships, it's Namibia's 55-year-old Lutz Wallers going up against Sudan's 27-year-old Ahmed Galal Eldin. There is Galal Eldin, the 2022 African Championship individual silver medalist. on form here a 571 for wallers in the ranking round 560 for galal eldin can the namibian continue that form as he starts the match Well, one high and one low six. Bernardo, um, as we get into this match, just to explain to us, I, I suppose Bearbo uh, is self-explanatory, but what are the differences here that we're looking out for? Uh, I love Bearbo archery. I, I think it's really exciting. Uh, basically, it's um, in its essence, it's the same as the recurve bow, which we're going to see later on today. Uh, but just as the name suggests, without all the equipment that uh, the Olympic recurve is allowed to have. So uh, bare bow archery is um, more, more pure. It, it just um, relies even more heavily on, on the technique, on the execution of the archers. And um, that's, that's the reason why I love it so much. It's really exciting. Oh. Well, not much in this at all. Just a single point uh, in favour of Galal Eldin from Sudan, leading 22-21. We, we have got a, a, an arrow that may well go to a measure. Uh, and in fact, uh, as I look at the official scoreboard, it's a two-point lead for Galal Eldin. I had the second arrow marked as a seven, and that was the one potentially going for a measure. But on the official scorecard, that is an eight. Just, I mean, the, the scores perhaps give some kind of indication, but but I know what difference does it make not having these aids? Is it is it just the, is it all just about the aim? No, definitely no. Um, the, the execution in general, uh, for example, one of the very one of the biggest differences compared to the Olympic recurve is uh, on on the recurve uh, you're, we're allowed to have a clicker, which is something that uh, kind of tells us that we've reached an an exact draw length and the bare bow doesn't have this so uh, what effectively does it's um you can end up varying uh, how much pressure you're putting on the arrow when you release so and so we, you we just might have more variation of not only to the sides but uh, high and low um so in bare bow when we see the archers just shooting let's say three tens it means that like those were three really good shots like in terms of execution but you have to nail it to hit three tens in, in the bare bow um and so it just makes it possible for huge swings to happen all around you know nobody is ever too comfortable in bare bow because it, it's so easy to to just drift from from the gold and give your your opponent an opportunity well, it's confirmed as a two-point lead for Galal Eldin, uh, as Bernardo Oliveira, our expert analyst, says, nothing is in the bag. So, for example, what I was saying before about the clicker and draw length, uh, we could see uh, Valors uh, from Namibia just uh, uh, collapsing a little bit as he was aiming, like he was kind of letting go a little bit. And this changes the, the pressure that you apply on the arrow and it changes where it's going to land significantly. He, he's doing it just now. 
not quite happy with his shots. Good opportunity for Galao. Well, 20 apiece, and uh, the scores provisionally level, so it'll be one set point each. And I suppose, that Bernardo, we should, uh, you've, you've hinted at recurve and, uh, and how close this is to that discipline. We are now in a set system uh, scoring situation. So the two point lead that Galal Eldin got in that first set means he gets both set points with the scores level in the second set they share the set points with one apiece so it's a 3-1 lead subject confirmation of course uh, for Galal Eldin uh, so what is the the target score that the two team the two athletes are looking for to take this gold medal six points six points and you walk away with a gold medal you you take the win uh, and if we have after five sets um, a 5-5 five, five draw, uh, then we go for a one-arrow shoot-off. But uh, well pointed out, it's a um, different scoring system, not cumulative like we saw in, in compound. And effectively, what this does is, um, edge set, both archers, they're starting from blank, you know. So you never really build a lead from the previous arrows. Of course, in terms of set points, you do. But... Uh, in terms of the cumulative score, uh, you don't. So um, every set is a new opportunity. 3-1 then in favor of Ahmed Galal al -Din. So Lutz Wallace here from Namibia to shoot first in the third set. Is that enough to clinch the points? Looks like it is. Well, it certainly drifted down, and whether it's a five or a six, uh, it won't make a difference in terms of who's getting the set points. 25 plays 22 in the set, so we should be all square at three set points each. We are going to go to the full five sets here. As they wait for uh, the arrows to taken out of the target and just noticed again Bernardo that wind starting to pick up D does that sort of add um, more of a difference for the bare bow archers yes yes um, it affects it, like affects every, uh, you and your opponent just the same but in in terms of uh, the bare bow because they have less aids and they have less um, accessories in the bow yeah it, it can make it even more challenging for them uh, we're seeing most of the the mistakes drifted to the left in in it's which the, the position the direction of of the wind um what i liked in 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 the last set was i think Waller's just had way more solid executions maybe he's dialed back into his shot and this can be bad news for galau but uh, they're leveled score and it's all to play for here three apiece Lutz Wallers of Namibia to get the fourth set underway. Six. Well, a low six for Galal Eldin. And you called it, Bernardo. It looks like Lutz Wallers is dialed in here.
Well, the set goes to well as he is dialed in, uh, but perhaps more concerning for Ahmed Galal El Din Bernardo is the fact those arrows were all over the place. Yes, um, uh, we could see him shaking more, and uh, his execution just just not solid in general. I wonder if uh, I don't know. He's feeling the nerves. He he was ahead, and he he let his opponent draw level this match. And uh, now he's in a very uncomfortable situation, which is he needs to win the fifth set to force the shoot off. And the bad news for him is that really Wallers is dialed in. Uh, he, he looks like a different archer shooting now. Um, it was interesting to see that in, in, in the previous break that they had in between sets, we, we could see him kind of, you know, uh, moving his shoulders and like kind of just um, changing his Kind of, you know, just uh, kind of relaxing his body a little bit. Maybe it's the routine he uses to kind of uh, relax, and I think it's been working for him. Now Galau needs to answer and shoot very strong and solid arrows in the yellow. Fifth and final set then. Ahmed Galal al -Din trailing by two set points. Will shoot first, needs to find his form again. He's really found his form in the movie over the last seven arrows. He's been pretty consistent. So big opportunity here to seal this with a big win. And another nine for a 28 gives him the two set points in the final set and Lutz Wallers of Namibia wins the Bearbo men's gold African title of 2023, beating Ahmed Galal Eldin of Sudan seven points to three. They will, of course, confirm the scores down the other end, but uh, Lutz Wallers found his form from arrow number eight. So, congratulations! So there we have it, the 2023 African champion of the Berbo men's individual competition, Lutz Wallers from Namibia. Silver medal goes to Ahmed Galal Eldin, who adds to the silver medal he won at the African Championships in 2022. A superb performance, though, from the Namibian to take the title here in Tunisia. Thank you very much. Now to add to the uh, drama here in Nabul, we switch our attention to the recurve competition. And that means the uh, organizing committee will be resetting the field. But coming up next, it's the recurve women's team gold medal match.
So ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, we will start with the record one team. And they think for the gold medal.
Please welcome the coaches and the judge for the Rocker Woman Team matches. Shooting over 70 metres, we turn our attention now to the recurve women's Thomas team gold medal match Yachts at the African Championships. From Egypt and Tunisia. And they are playing for the gold medal. On the target one, from Egypt, Jana Ali, Nada Azam, Rana Kamel. On the target two, from Tunisia, Rua Bin Abdul Qadr, Reha Bin Zainab Hazel. And the judges, Hussam Abdul Fatah Romajid. So the team's out and ready to go for the Recurve women's team gold medal match here at the African Championships. Egypt line up with Yana Ali, Nada Azam and Rana Kamel. Tunisia with Rua Ben Abdel Kadir, Rihab El Walid and Zainab Hazel. Egypt to shoot first. Nine. So back to the team formation, a set system of scoring. So each set is scored individually. Target score for the teams is five set points. Eight. And the teams will go through two rotations. Uh, each archer will shoot one arrow, so two arrows per archer per set. Oh, as I'm drifting oh. way left there. El Walid, a Tokyo Olympian, putting it into the middle of the target. Just 16, Ben Abdul Kadir. Bernardo, it seems like uh, the wind has settled a bit here, but uh, not seeing that communication, you say, is so important. Indeed. Um, I thought Egypt had given Tunisia the perfect opportunity with the first three arrows, but Tunisia is still trying to find their way into the gold. And uh, maybe just everybody a little too nervous, everybody trying to over-focus oh. maybe and not talking as as you right it, uh, rightly pointed out um the the first few arrows are about shaking off the nerves a little bit but um yeah they i think they everybody just needs to relax a little bit more to dial into this match uh over trying that doesn't do you any good Eight. So 
big pressure on this final arrow. Zainab Hazel, a nine to share the set points. Oh, and that's drifted way out to the left again. So the set points with Egypt. And uh, like you say, Bernardo, it, it looked like uh, Egypt were struggling in those first three arrows, but their second three were a lot better. Yes, and uh, Tunisia uh, is struggling more. So uh, sometimes it doesn't really matter whether you're struggling or not, but if your opponent is struggling more than you are, then that's good so news for you. Um, and But I, I just see also some, some time uh, variation as well. Um, you know, as, as archers, at least me and my teammates, we, we often talk about not trying to shoot an 11, you know, because uh, the maximum scoring is 10. So sometimes we're trying just to be too perfect, trying to, to hit 11, which doesn't exist. And um, in, in team matches like this, because you have more pressure of getting on and off the line and the time and the, the, the final venue pressure and everything, sometimes uh, all you've got to do is just do it simple. Just put the arrow there in the gold. It doesn't really matter whether it's a 10 or 9. And uh, yeah, just do it simple. But uh, we have Egypt with a, a clear uh, advantage here, but it's only two points, uh, two set points to nil. And um, yeah, Tunisia, they, they don't have to, to make up for the, the five point deficit. They, they just need to outscore Egypt by a single point and then they're back level at this match 2-2. Two, two. Um, so yeah, let's see whether they can make this comeback. But Tunisia do need to get back into their stride straight away. Uh, a topsy-turvy set for them to start things off and they need to dial straight into the middle they'll shoot first in this second set the windy conditions that we've had here i should say the blustery conditions we've had here continue as well and now shooting over 70 meters the the recurve arrow flies a little slower than the compound arrow so can get more affected by the wind so we need to keep a close eye on that as well tunisia up to the line Seven. where's that communication Yana Ali up first for Egypt, 18 years old. Nada Assam, the 21-year-old, uh, competed at the Youth Olympic Games in 2018. Buenos Aires. She's drifted out to the left. So, two teams both level at the halfway stage of the second set. Another long hold by Walid. 
um, in her first arrows, she was taking long just like this. And um, I thought maybe it was just her usual shot because she shot two arrows in the gold. But uh, I think now she paid the price. Also, yeah. not only a Walid, but uh, yeah, her teammate, as, as we've just seen now. I think everybody's rushing off the line again. It's, it's a mistake that we're seeing again uh, here in today's competition. And um, you just you make up for uh, no time at all by doing this. But your shot can wow. suffer so much. And everybody drifting to the left because of the wind, of course. Oh, so much movement with the wind, but it's in the ten. <sighs> Great stuff by Team Egypt. They're so comfortable to clinch the second set and have a very comfortable margin. Just held on there for a little bit because the wind gusted right in the faces of the Egyptians. Uh, but that was a dominant set for a 4-0 lead. And Egypt could do this in the next set. And uh, well, given the fact they only need to score five points for the team win, they could do it with a draw. But at the moment, they are looking by far the stronger team. Communication. Uh, look, we can see the Egyptians now talking in the background there in between uh, the sets. But neither team seem to be communicating with each other in between shots. Yeah, but uh, Egypt is just doing a, a more simple thing. Uh, I see them uh, just doing better with the timing. I think uh, to the Tunisian girls, they are struggling with the timing so much more, just holding on too long. And uh, in, this, in these windy conditions, I think it's a better call to just, just make a, a fast, simple and confident shot. And this is exactly what Egypt is doing. Um, Tunisia, it's now or never. They have to react. They have to get uh, their groups together, just shoot arrows in the yellow uh, if they want to stand any chance of taking this to a shoot-off because uh, already Egypt is, is for sure going to have at least a shoot-off for the gold medal here. So after this second end of this match, four points for Egypt. Zero for Tunisia. Confirmation there of the scores then. Tunisia have to fight back and they have to fight back straight away. We have El Walid ready to step up to the shooting line. Tunisia trailing by four set points to nil, have to win this set to stay in with a chance of the African title. Nine. Now that's better from El Wadi back in the yellow. Her timing was better as well. Hazel didn't seem very happy with that shot, but it's in the gold. Good enough. Tunisia reacting a little bit. Eight. And 
and it's funny we we can even we we can't hear the wind anymore it clearly has died out and we see the arrows drifting to the right now um you just got to be adapting to these conditions as as they happen um and it's a perfect opportunity for tunisia it's the best opening egypt has given them so far Good. and el wali el wali did exactly what's expected of her shooting two very solid solid arrows in the gold she topped the ranking round she this shows that she's clearly one of the best archers in this field and th that's exactly the reason i believe that they put her to shoot first in the team to be the pace setter and give her teammates the confidence to then just do their thing and we see them we see her just um tapping her teammate there a little bit it might be too little too late from tunisia but um, they're trying to react to just in the end. Seven. Seem to be a lot of movement there, but that's the best six arrows they've shot so far in this gold medal match. Twenty-three required from it. These three arrows, nine of them picked up straight away by Yana Ali. Is it enough? Eight. Looks to be, looks to be enough. 50 playing 48 then in this set. Is it a six nil win for Egypt? They certainly think so. We have to wait for that target judge to confirm the scores. The faces of the Tunisians, perhaps giving this one away a little bit. So, waiting uh, for the final result of the judge's signal. Well, it certainly looks like uh, Zainab Hazel looks uh, happy. She thinks that they've done this. Uh, sorry, I should say that's uh, Nada Azam thinks they've done this. <laughs> All smiles for the Egyptians. They do have to wait for confirmation, but we think they've done it. So congratulations for the Egypt team for the gold medal. Well, there you go. Confirmation then in venue. Uh, Egypt have taken the African title in the Rico of Women's Team competition. Yana Ali, Nada Azam and Rana Kamel taking a 6-0 victory over Tunisia. Silver for Rua Ben Abdul Kader. We have El Walid and Zainab Hazel. But the Egyptians were dominant. This is for the photo group. Thank you very much. So confirmation then that Egypt have taken the recurve women's team gold medal match with a 6-0 victory over Tunisia. And they'll make way for the last match in this session. As we turn our attention next to the recurve men's team gold medal match here in Nabal 2023.
So the next match, the last match, match of the morning session, it will be Rocker Man Team. And they will play for the gold medal. Please welcome the coaches and the judge. Coming up next, the recurve men's team gold medal match at the African Championships of 2023 as Egypt take on Algeria. So let's welcome the archers from Egypt and Algeria. the target one, Egypt team, Ali Bahadeen, Muhammad Sharif, Yusuf Tulba, on the target two, from Algeria, Bakari Imaduddin, Nazir Muhammad Rayyan, Nasser Nazim, on the line, judges, Jeremy Hu, from South Africa. So Egypt lining up on target number one with Beha Eldin Ali, Sharif Mohammed, and Youssef Tolba. Algeria in the red shirts with Emma Adin Bakri, Mohammed Lazreg, and Nazim Nasser. Young Algerian team. And they will shoot first. Nasreg into the six after Nasser's nine. Bakri looks like he may well have cut the line for a nine. Dean Ali to shoot first for Egypt. Seven, maybe eight. Now the oldest member of the team, 34 year old Sharif Mohammed. Tokyo Olympian Yusuf Tolba also into the 10. Egypt look a little bit more settled, Bernardo. Indeed, and um, it's cool to notice that in, in the previous match we had the Tunisian Olympian, Olympian Ewali, uh, their stronger archer in the squad. She was opening their sequence of shots, which it's, it has its pressure. And Egypt, they put their, their Olympian and their best archer as the closing one. So also another position of uh, a lot of pressure and uh, interesting team dynamic there. Algeria lining up with their eldest athlete, Bakri, at just 24. Six. As we 
can hear the wind is back and I think uh, everyone was overcompensating. We could just see them uh, changing the site a little bit, making some adjustments. Long hold, doesn't matter. There it is in the 10. Very solid stuff. Oh, great, oh. great stuff. Yeah, room to spare, isn't there here? More than enough for a dominant first set for Egypt. That is some difference as well. And uh, provisionally uh, 45, although the third arrow is going to be measured for the Algerians. It could be a 44 for them. But either way, Egypt looking very strong from the start <laughs> there's a there's a difference here certainly in the first set in the class and, and the execution uh from the teams definitely uh well it's i believe this difference we're seeing is, is proportional to, to the difference between these these two teams already from the the qualification round uh egypt was on on a class of its own and uh, they are still going into this match. They, uh, Algeria, they, they'll have to do something. They'll have to get their acts together if they want to challenge the, the strong Egyptian team. But uh, wow, with all those tens, they, they've certainly shown that uh, they, they, they can take whatever Algeria can, can bring to them. But let's see, it's only a two point advantage. Um, still a lot to be decided, a lot to, to be played in, in this match. Uh, but yeah, Eg Egypt is looking very strong indeed. And it's interesting. We we see the the Algerian archer kind of mimicking the how he draws the bow and the release. This is a, a very common uh, technique, let's say. You know, just to remind yourself, we see him doing it just now, or to the right of the screen, just to remind yourself of of, of the, the feelings you want, the sensations you want to have. You know, just a uh, a quick rundown so that you when you do the the real thing, it you do exactly what you want. Dominant performance from Egypt in the first set of this recurve men's team gold medal match at the African Championships. Algeria step up to the line, two set points down, and they need to up their game here. Nine. Spot on. Might be the beginning of the Algerian reaction. Let's see whether Egypt can answer to that. Another long hold, some bow movement due to the wind. I think it's his usual shot, but uh, yeah, not very comfortable in windy conditions. Nine, 
<laughs> That's interesting how Tolba draws his hand coming so low. It's a bit unusual. But it goes back to what I said before, that there is no right or wrong in terms of how you execute your shot, as long as you do the same. And it clearly works for Olympian Yusuf Toba from Egypt. But it's a very interesting aspect of his technique. We, we don't see anyone else doing this in, in this match here. Lazrek got it right when he adjusted the sight. He had a, a seven to the left in his previous arrow. We saw him adjusting the sight off the line and he's back in the gold, just what they needed. A strong finish would be good for Algeria. Oh, can't be any better than that. That's some turnaround, 46 in the first set, 54 in the second. They put some pressure on Egypt here and they look to be making a match of this. Three nines is just what they need to tie this set. So they're going to have to find a 10 if they want to widen their lead and increase their lead into this match. Well, they got those three nines. Uh, there's a, a few arrows for Egypt that uh, are subject to a measure. So we have to wait and see the outcome of this one. Looks like a solid 54 from Algeria. Closest to us with the red shirts. It's a, a little bit of an anxious wait for Sharif Muhammad, Baha Eldin Ali and Yusuf Tolba here. I don't think either team's sure of the outcome here. Drifting to the left for Egypt on their target face. But what a group they had. Yeah. Even though they, they, they might have been matched by Algeria, but uh, their consistency shows on the target once again. Like a very tight group. It's really nice to see. Well, looks like we have got confirmation of the 53 from Egypt. And I was wrong. I thought that they, they needed three nines to, to tie and actually they lost. So Algeria, by just a single point, got what they needed and they're back into this match. Like they, this is the thing about the set system, you know, they, they lost the first set by 10 points and they won the second one by a single point and they're all level. This is, this is the exciting and cool thing about the set system. Algeria very much alive. Yeah, and that's some turnaround, isn't it? 46 points in the first set, 54 in the second. And uh, as you say, the whole thing has turned on its head. Two set points apiece in the recurve men's team gold medal match at the African Championships between Egypt and Algeria. Now, let's see 
what resilience the Egyptians have. Algeria fought back to level up as we go into set number three. Again to the left. He's been consistently just missing some precious points to the left. It might be too costly in the end. Hopefully not for Team Algeria, but oh, is that has it touched the line? That's the big question, isn't it? The scoreboard suggesting perhaps it hasn't. 26, perhaps 27. Some more side adjustments. It took the words out of my mouth there, Bernardo. The Olympic experience keeping them in this one. The important thing for Team Algeria is that they are keeping, they, they are staying very close to Egypt. And sometimes this is all you need just to keep the pressure going. But not, not what they needed with an eight just yet. He'll hope his teammates can make up for it. Lazarek back in the gold. A lot can change in that score of 52. Two arrows subject to a measure for Algeria. Oh, that's opened the door though. Mohammed has been so consistent. He, like he's, uh, he's been one of the pillars of this team in this match. Oh, that's some finish as well from Yusuf Tolba. So, despite the scoreline saying 53-52, we have to wait for the measure here from the two Algerian arrows, and this one is on a knife edge i think at the very very least egypt are going to be level with algeria and that's only if the measure goes algeria's way this is absolutely as tense as it can get set number three complete and uh, the score unknown we came in two set points each
the judge is working extra in this match, having to check so many arrows with the magnifying glass. Fine, fine margins in between these teams and hats off to, to Algeria. They are keeping up the pressure. They're staying alive in this match. It's a great effort by them. But also amazing to see how, how Egypt is, is just being able to, to answer to everything Algeria has got. But nothing is decided just yet. No, it certainly isn't. I think one of the arrows has been marked up for Algeria. We didn't see what the judge said on the second one. And they still seem to be examining it. Is there some dispute? No, it looks like they have decided. We're yet to get that confirmation, though. Fifty-three, fifty-two. One arrow has definitely been marked up, and the other arrow remains the same. So Egypt do take the lead, but boy, oh boy, this is as tight as it can get. Can the Algerians keep their discipline here? They've lost out in the third set by a single point, but very much in the match here. Set number four, Algeria will shoot first. Egypt just have to match their score to take the 2023 African Championship title in the recurve men's team competition. Up first, Nazim Nasser. Seven. I think Nasser is feeling the pressure. Uh, he seemed more nervous than in his previous shots. I think he felt the pressure of, of shooting the opening arrow at such a critical moment. His teammates will have to make up for him. Oh dear. <laughs> Haven't seen one of those yeah, from Algeria since the first set. Now, can Baha El Din Ali keep his cool here? Seven. That's the third seven he shot. Yusuf Tolba, gold at the uh, two golds, in fact, at the African Games. Tokyo Olympian puts it right into the middle of the target. Steadies the ship when needed. Yeah, that's his shot. Uh, Nasser, clearly, especially looking at his second shot, he struggled so much. And, well, <laughs> last moment adjustment for Lazarag over there. But uh, I think Algeria, they did feel the pressure in the in the in their first three arrows. And it might be too late. Oh, this is not good for them. They're going to run out of time here. If he's not careful, he needs to get this arrow away quickly. Oh. <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> Pressure on Bakri, though. Time is not with him. Very quick shot. Oh, he's piled that one into the 10 for a 50. 
the the funny thing is that uh, sometimes it's actually better when you're running out of time because then you you literally you just don't think about anything you, you just draw the string and release and 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 sometimes it's all you need to to be hitting the the 10 so many times in archery we we pay the price for over trying it's something i've said today before and uh, yeah but now it's it's a comfortable situation for team egypt nonetheless made easier with that arrow a seven for the african title and it's in the hands of their tokyo olympic archer yusuf tolba puts it into the seven and that is exactly what they needed uh, i'm pretty sure that wasn't measured that way we wait to see confirmation though And we've got 51 on the scorecard for Algeria. I've got it down as 50, and I think uh, it's 50 apiece in the uh, fourth set. We have to wait for confirmation from the target judge. But if the scores remain as they are on the official scoreboard, Egypt have taken this title. And out is the uh, crack referee on the target the target judge with his magnifying glass out again so we are waiting for the official score of this fourth end of this match And we are waiting for the judge's signal. Well, the thumbs yeah, up the coming agent. from the the, the Egyptian agent is putting his thumb up. I think that's to his team to say, it's okay, you've done it. We still have to wait and see, though. And there it is. The high fives all around. Bahad Eldin Ali, Sheriff so Muhammad, and Yusuf Tolba uh, getting the tied score and in the fourth set for a 5 3 victory and the recurve men's African title of 2023. Silver then for Imaldine Bakri, Mohamed Lazareg, and Nazim Nasser. And what a performance they put in to make a match of this as well. Silver for Algeria, but gold for Egypt in the recurve men's team competition here at Nabal 2023. Well, Bernardo, that was some uh, last match to uh, finish off this uh, session here. Uh, it was a great comeback from Algeria in the second. Yeah, they, they did put up a great fight. I, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Um, I think the bittersweet feeling for them will be, they, they will know that they could have won the gold. They could have gone to the shootoff, to say the least. Like uh, Egypt did give them opportunities, but Algeria, those, you know, mistakes here and there constantly, they ended up just costing too much for them. But uh, they can leave with their heads held high because they did put up a fight and it was really exciting to watch. Fabulous match. We've seen uh, the compound men's team goal going to Mauritius. The compound mixed team goal going to Zimbabwe. The compound men's open gold going to Aliou Drame of Senegal. Lona Bartosz took silver in the compound women's individual to Jacqueline Kurtz of Namibia. The men's gold went to Mauritius to Henry Howe. Bebo gold to Namibia's Wallers. Recurve women's team gold to Egypt, as well as the recurve men's team gold going to Egypt as well. An absolutely brilliant session here on the last day of the 2023 African Championships. Tunisia have done a fabulous job in the Mediterranean coastal city of Narble putting on this session. The penultimate one one more to go uh, coming up very shortly later on today and there are olympic spots up for grabs here at the african championships but for now thanks for joining us